Hey guys, Josh from Vertical Drum Co. here. I wanted to do a tutorial about how I use my Roland SPD-SX as a MIDI controller for Ableton Live. The really cool thing about this and one of the main advantages and reasons why I do this is because you can change all of your sounds on Ableton Live very quickly and easily. And you can also do some really cool features like routing different sounds to the front of house board so that they can control individual sounds when necessary. So hopefully this tutorial will give you a quick rundown, help you guys out to be able to set that up the same way. All you need is Ableton Live and a Roland SPD-SX. Let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is go to your menu. Once you're on setup here, you'll need to go down to MIDI. In your MIDI option, you wanna make sure a couple things are set here. So first, your MIDI sync doesn't matter if you're not plugging in with a MIDI cable. In this situation, we're just gonna take our Roland SPD-SX and we're gonna plug it into the computer via a USB cable. That's the method I'm gonna recommend for what we're doing here. So set your MIDI sync to off. Local control needs to be set to off. Soft through also is set to off. You're gonna to need to make sure that your USB MIDI I slash F is set to on. And that's the only option here that you wanna have on. From there, we're gonna go back to setup and go to option. On this part, we wanna make sure that in the bottom USB mode is set to audio slash MIDI. If this is set to wave manager, then it's set up to connect to the computer to transfer files to it. And that's not what we want. We wanna make sure this is set to audio slash MIDI. That means with the USB connected, we're using this as a MIDI device today. Okay, from there, it's gonna be important that you set up your kits. So I'll explain this in a little bit. In here, if you click on kit, I've set up a new kit. When I do that, if we go menu and then go to kit, it's gonna show these different options here at the bottom. Not worried about common, not worried about output right now. We're gonna go to MIDI specifically. So with this, we wanna make sure the pad channel is set to global and then we can control every single one with MIDI notes, which are numbers. If we start off here, that means the bottom left pad is MIDI note number one with the way I have it set up. The second pad is MIDI note number two. The next one is MIDI note number three. If we keep going, we can go through all of these. So the way I have it set is top left is number nine, top middle is number 10, and 11 for top right. Middle left is five, that's the top big pad. Next pad over is six, next pad is seven, and then the bottom are one, two, and three. We wanna make sure that gate is off and external control is off. This is also the spot where if you did have any triggers plugged in, if you had like a separate pad or something like that, you'd be able to set those numbers too. Um, I don't have any of those set up right now, so we're not gonna worry about that. So as you open up Ableton Live, there's gonna be a couple things that you need to do. The first is you need to make sure that you have a MIDI track and that it's armed. From there, on this MIDI track, you'll want to install a drum rack. You can just click on the top little banner and then you can double click on drum rack and it'll install, or you can drag it over to that channel if you want. Now, if you see here on the left side at the bottom, there's all these different possibilities for your drum rack. We're gonna scroll all the way down. So as I get all the way to the bottom, these MIDI notes correspond to the notes that I did on the SPDSX. I'll show you that here in just a second. We're going to be able to drag some samples onto here, choose where the samples are on our pad, and then be able to play them and have it control Ableton Live with our drum rack. But first, we need to make sure there's a couple things happening. We need to make sure on our monitor that we are at auto, we need to make sure the track is armed and that it's turned on. And then we also need to go here, 
MIDI from, I already have it set. We want it on SPDSX, not the SPDSX MIDI. That would be if we controlled it with the MIDI cable, which we're not, we're just using the USB cable. So make sure we've clicked SPDSX. This all channels doesn't matter. But if you've done this right, you should get some sort of a signal when you hit this. If you look in the top right, all the way up here, you'll see that there's a signal every time I hit. It's just a little flashing dot. So we don't have any samples programmed in here, so we're not gonna have anything here yet. We're just gonna see this flashing dot and make sure that we have MIDI set up for the SPDSX going into Ableton Live. Okay, once you have it set here, um, our next thing is to get some sounds onto the pads that we've set up as MIDI control. So, wherever you have your sounds, I just have a whole little setup here. We're gonna go to that sound and we're gonna do some cinematic pop. I'm not sure why, but that's what we're doing today. So, when you're in here, in the drum rack for your channel, the very bottom, we programmed, remember the first bottom left one is note number one. When we hit the MIDI controller, the SPDSX, it's gonna light up pad number one, MIDI note number one. There we go. When we hit the next one over, MIDI note number two, it's gonna light up that pad. So see how it switched right here? If we do the next one, it's gonna go to three. Next up here, this is five, six, seven, and so on, right? So now we have this set, when we hit these, it triggers that within the drum rack. Now all we need to do is program what sounds are gonna play when we hit those pads. So let's put a kick, let's do this deep one here. So now when we hit this, that kick is going to trigger. All there is to it. So let's set up the rest of these here. We've got maybe some hats on the right. Let's put a tick hat right here. We need a snare. Let's go with the short snare there. So now when we play on the SPDSX, it's gonna actually trigger those samples. But here's the really cool thing with that. If we want to change those samples, um, there's a couple different ways we can do it here, or a couple different ways we can get to them. So no matter what you're on, if you just hit one of the samples on the SPDSX, like that, it's gonna go to it and it's gonna bring it up here in your bottom section. If you hit that, that goes to the kick. So back to the snare. If I wanted to transpose that snare and let's say bring it down a bit, all I have to do is just go like this and change right here on that section. So that's gonna change the sound of the snare. If I wanted to, let's say, bring the kick up and transpose that higher, I could do that here. With those, each of them, if you just double click it, it's gonna go back to what it was. And then when you make your changes, it's just gonna happen super easy in here. Let's go the opposite way. Let's bring the kick down and the snare up. Not sure why we would want to have either of those sounds, but <laughs> it's a good demonstration. So the other nice thing that you're gonna need to do here is set up more than one kit. I wanna control one drum rack in Ableton Live. So I've got the SPDSX here. That's this whole channel. But I don't want just three samples. I wanna have 30 samples maybe. So if we go back to our SPDSX and we click menu, and then go to kit, we have this one all set up, right? All of these channels have our MIDI notes. But all we have to do is go to our next kit. I set up a new kit, menu, same thing, go to kit. So on this one, I have different corresponding MIDI notes. And these go and match up to everything in the drum rack on Ableton Live. 
So if we do that, this is still on the same channel in Ableton Live. It's on the same drum rack. We can put different samples into that drum rack and all we have to do is change our kit here on the SPD SX. So I'll kind of show you how that works. So right now we're on kit 23. That's the MIDI notes of 13, 14, 15 and up, right? If we hit the bottom left pad now, that's gonna show us MIDI note number 13 in our drum rack. See right here? Now if we hit the next one over, that's gonna be the corresponding MIDI note. Next one over, same thing. So now we could program some samples, put some stuff into there however we want. Let's do the same sort of thing, snare on the bottom middle, kick on the bottom left, and uh, let's do a hat on the bottom right. I'm not programming all of these right now, I'm just showing you kind of the basics so that you guys can get going. So let's go to kit 22. That's our lowest MIDI notes and our beats here. And then all we have to do is switch to kit 23 and then we're gonna play the same thing. So the other great thing about running the SPD-SX as a MIDI controller for Ableton Live is that you have control of your outputs that are going to your front of house soundboard. In this case, we're set up right now so that all of our audio goes to master. That means we would just plug into the headphone spot or the two master outs on the interface and get all of the sounds. But that's not really the way we want to run it right now. So I'm going to show you the method that I like to use. We've got just our drum rack here. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to duplicate it after we have it all set up. And this is going to be a really, really basic, just a way to get maybe our hi-hats and our snares to one channel and our kicks to a different channel. So that front of house can EQ some stuff, they can tr control everything how they want to and they can get a little bit cleaner signal rather than our whole SPD-SX heading to them. Um, we could do this with all eight outputs on the Scarlet interface, or we could, if we have a four output interface, we could use four outputs. However you wanna do it, you can get really complicated if you want to. In this case, I'm just gonna show you a pretty simple way to just kinda, the same thing you do as if you were panning left and right or having sub out, main out from the SPD-SX. So, this is our first channel here that we set up. We did this a little bit ago, remember? Everything's still in there. This is our second channel, we just duplicated it. So what I would do is we're gonna split up the kicks and the snares. So we're actually gonna be controlling two drum racks now. So let's delete this one. And let's delete that. And then let's title this snares, maybe a hi-hat. And then this one, we're gonna title it Kicks Only. And we need to delete everything else off of it. So let's get rid of that, get rid of this. Bye and bye. So now what'll happen is when we hit our bottom left pad on the SPD-SX, it's just gonna control the kick, which the kick sound is in our second drum rack titled kicks here. So when we hit this, the first one's not gonna go up, the second one is. Now when we hit our snares, it's gonna do the opposite. It's only gonna play it on the first drum rack. Same thing on our hi-hats. If we have that selected, it would show us the sample just like it did with the kicks. And then when we hit our first one, it goes back to the kicks channel. Now, what we would need to do here we go to preferences, that's command, comma, output configuration. You can enable your outputs. Um, I already had one and two enabled. You could enable all of them if you need. 
and then we're gonna go to master on audio two. We're gonna go to external out. Let's make our kicks number two and our snares and the hi-hat number one. So we're gonna do external out number one. On the kicks here, we're gonna go to external out number two. So then we would plug in a cable to the back of our Scarlet. Channel one output is gonna to go to the board to front of house, and that's just gonna be our snares and hi-hat. Channel two's output would be our kicks, and that's gonna to go to the board as well. We could get excessively complicated if we wanted to do that. Let's say we wanted to have every one of these six samples be a different channel. So let's switch it up a little. Um, let's make that one and two. Let's duplicate this. So this is gonna be kick two. This is gonna be kick one. Now let's say this is only this kick, so let's get rid of that one. This here, channel two, is only gonna be this kick, so let's get rid of this. And then this one is only gonna be that snare, so we're gonna need to duplicate this four times, or sorry, three times, so we have four total. And then let's route it first. I find that that's a little easier. So three, four, five, and six. And then let's choose which ones they are. So this is gonna be that. So let's delete the others. This one is gonna be that guy. Same thing, delete the others. This is gonna be that guy there. Hopefully you're getting the idea already. And that'll be the top one. So from there, we gotta make sure they're all armed. Make sure all the tracks are on. And remember, these are on two different kits. We've got new kit number 22 and new kit number 23. So. New kit number 22, when we hit that, that's just the first channel. Um, the next channel is gonna be on new kit number 23, the same pad, bottom left. If we go back, we got here, 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 and here. So we've got a separate channel for each of these and we would have a separate cable going to the board. That's not gonna be necessary for most worship settings, uh, just maybe panning left right or kicks and snares is going to be about all you need but you can get excessively complicated if you want to make sure when you set this up that your latency is very low you want to make sure you're under 10 milliseconds and you want to make sure that you're closer to five if possible if you get into 10 12 15 milliseconds the samples are going to play after you hit the pad so you want to make sure your let latency is very low having a good macbook Having a good PC laptop or a really good Scarlet interface is all gonna help you with that. I like to have my samples around 128. If you push them too high, your latency is gonna go up and you're gonna have delayed sounds when you hit the SPDSX. So the other really cool advantage of this is that if you want to change a sound at any time, it's really, really easy to do that. If you have some sounds in here, you've got whatever programmed in. We're just going to take and just drop a few of these in there. Doesn't matter what they are. Let's delete these others. And so we've got samples here. If we want to just change that sample on the fly, we don't like a certain sound we have, all we have to do is just click and drag here. Plus the other really nice thing is that you can just hit the play button here. You don't even have to hit the SPDSX if you want to just hear the sample. So you can go through your sound library all you want and just choose some of this and just switch it up. It's really nice. You can also take on each sample, if you want to cut the length of it, you can do that here in the bottom section. You can also do I showed you the transpose already, 
but you could fade it out. Like let's say you have a really long sample and you wanna fade that out quicker, you could do that here. Or you could even fade in a sample if you had a rumble or something cool like that. That would be no problem. So sometimes with um, some of these big sounds that I have, I'll take these and instead of using the entire sample, I'll cut it shorter and then I'll fade out here. So that, that sound will go away a little bit quicker and it'll fade out naturally. You can choose too if you want these to be classics or if you want them to be one shots. You could even set up some stuff in here that's gonna loop. So I hope that helps you guys to be able to set up your SPD-SX as a MIDI controller for Ableton. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, uh, send us a message, you can get a hold of us on Instagram pretty easy. Again, it's Vertical Drum Co. Just trying to help you guys get really good sounds for your worship settings at church. Have a good day.